Hi there, this is Byron and today we will take a look at a little obscure game called Strix. So let's take a look. There are two exa files, an intra exa and a main exa. There's also a batch file. Oh, no. Just one X, please. And the batch file runs the intro and then the main exa. The problem is that the, when, when I run the intro in DOSBox, DOSBox will crash. So I will record that on a different machine in a minute. Uh, but before we do that, I will uh, read some background information uh, from the manual so that we know what the game is all about. Strix. By the year 3106 AD, the Techno Wars had left planet Earth devastated. Its charred and wasted surface giving off poisonous fumes fatal to man and machine alike. But at least peace had broken out. At last the four governments who waged this destructive war had come to their senses. At last they had started to cooperate for the greater good of mankind. Their greatest achievement has been the construction of the dome cities where life can go in an environment uncontaminated contami contaminated by the pollution that has ravaged the outside world. Each of the four domes is linked by a travel tube system to the hub of the system Central Dome City. The journey only takes a few minutes by speed bike. Each dome consists of a huge number of platform sections accessed by lifts and tunnels. Deep beneath the domes is the hive where energy crystals are mined to keep dome civilization going. Of course, someone's had to do a lot of work to build and maintain all this. You guessed it was those lovable docile cyborg robots. But a governing dome um, committee's report into the causes of the Great War discovered a horrible truth. It was robotic and computer malfunction that sparked off the conflict that destroyed civilization as we knew it. Terrified by the consequences of another robot revolt, the committee imposed a mandatory three-year lifespan on robotic systems and a five-year lifespan on all computer installations. Under no circumstances could any exceptions be made. This termination system known as the Life Force is controlled by four separate keys, each one held by a different member of the committee. If activated, the Life Force would destroy all robotic and computer systems. Okay, dateline the 5th of September 4516 AD, that would be 1400 years later. The unthinkable has happened. The cyborg slave robots have risen against their masters, claiming the same rights to life as the humans. The keys to the life force have been stolen and, crazed by the newly discovered power, the cyborgs have ass assassinated the Fort Dome comedy members in the most horrible way. Knowing that the ex-masters can no longer destroy them at the flick of a button, the cyborgs are determined to wipe out the human population. The human population full stop. A special extermination patrol of cyborg assassins roams the dome cities, seeking out human life and ruthlessly destroying it. In a secret, high security cell deep within the central dome, a group of high ranking citizens meets to combat the menace. Naturally, the keys must be recovered, but who can do that job? Only the implementation of Project Alpha Secure can save the, stri save the day. Strix, half man, half robot, is the result of this great scientific effort. Brave, strong, resourceful, super intelligent Strix is the Dome's last chance to fight to the death against the cyborg rebels. You are Strix. Your mission, and you have no choice but to accept it, is to seek out and destroy the cyborg assassins before they kill all human life, and recover the keys to the life force and decode the machine to destroy all rebel cyborgs. Um. Oh, there's a few a few hints at playing the game. As Strix, you are endowed with extraordinary physical and combat powers. You will also be able to find and use a jetpack and jet bike. Your mental powers are just as important as your physical ones. Finding the keys and cracking the life force code will not be easy. Time is strictly limited. The future of the human race depends on you. Good luck on your mission. You will need it. So, what do we do? We explore the dome cities. The domes. There are four dome cities linked to the central large dome. Each dome city is divided into two parts. The upper section, the dome itself, is constructed of platforms and stairways on a number of levels. Here you will also find keys, passes and other objects which will be essential for completion of the game. As well as collecting these, you will also have to tackle the robot guards that patrol the platforms. The Hive. Within each dome is an entrance to the hive. 
Tile with a mining complex which contains many energy crystals. Energy crystals, when collected, can be used to replenish the energy levels of your weaponry, speeder spike, and the mining craft. Use the mining craft to explore the hive, but beware, each mine is swarming with deadly androids and other creations. The travel tubes. Each dome is linked to the central dome via a travel tube. You must use a speeder bike to traverse the length of the tube. Destroy any enemies you encounter within the tube. And lastly, deactivating the cyborgs. Before the cyborgs can be deactivated, you must work out how to use the color-coded terminals to the main computer. These are located within the central dome city. This must be done within the time limit or the, the deactivation will fail. And that's pretty much all um, the relevant background information that is in the manual. So I will now re show you the introduction video. Since DOSBox crashes when I try to run the Intrax, uh, I will just run it natively on my uh, Siemens Nixdorf laptop. It's a 486. And here we go. Since this is the DOS version of the game, we don't get any music. And the game also was released for Amiga and Atari ST. Those intros have music. And at least the um, Amiga version of the introduction is quite famous for its music. It's considered to be one of the better introductions to games back in the day. Yeah, very professional. I just point a camera at the screen. Ah oh well, whatever gets the job done. Okay, time to actually play that game. Oh, did I mention that this game was um, published by Psygnosis in 1989? Well, at least, now I did. So you run this game by typing main. And um, since I'm not using a joystick, I define keys, up, down, left, right, and fire. I don't know any of those guys. Okay, let's hit fire. Okay, I'm hitting escape to pause the game for a moment. So, this is Strix, the character. Um, there actually is a pistol lying in front of the character that we can pick up by hitting F1. By hitting F2 we switch between walking and running mode and I don't really know why you should ever use walking mode. Running mode is just quicker and you might might be able to outrun a few enemies. You cannot outwalk any enemies. I don't know whether there is a section in the game that requires you to run. I suggest uh, that requires you to walk. I suggest always running. With F3 you switch items between your hand and your inventory. This is where you can hold an item in your hand. And this is where you can uh, store an item, one item in your inventory. There is actually 
a whole bunch of items to pick up, but you can only have two on your person at the same time. With a four you open doors, like this. The door is locked and you need a yellow key because this yellow little square is next to it to open those doors. And there are four keys to collect, four colored keys. You store them here once you have them. What else? Um, this is your high score bar. Uh, yeah, not bar, your high score display. Um, you get points for killing enemies. This is your life meter. If this turns to zero, uh, you turn into a rock and it's game over. This is the fuel gauge for your jetpack. And you have two more fuel gauges here. One is for the speeder bike and one is for the mining vehicle. This is sort of the map. You can see we are in the central hub area right now. And there are four satellite areas that we can get to. That's pretty much all there is. For, there, there are hidden enemies as well. For instance here there is some um, sort of turret hidden that will activate once we get close to it. Okay, that's pretty much it. So I activate the game again. Ah, well, fuck you. See, uh, that's the verse. Those guys, they beam in and they fuck you up, um, and they shoot you th through the environment, so to say. They send you flying, and I will not be able to pick up that gun again. Therefore, I cannot defeat this enemy. It's practically game over now. I might as well hit F10 to get out. Okay, let's try again. Those guys are the worst. One of the this game has many problems. Those guys are the biggest problem. So for instance, this is running. This would be walking. So, uh, let's holster our gun. This here is a time bomb that I just activated. Uh, killed another one. Uh, maybe I will reduce the cycles a bit. Uh, another thing, uh, you can uh, shoot enemies that are off the screen and kill them. You see that... Oh, see, I got for, uh, I went from 2030 to 2040, so I hit someone. And now there was a huge jump, that means I killed someone. Okay, let's holster the gun and pick up a hand grenade. Okay. So now I picked up um, ammunition. B1 is ammunition. You can. Um, this is the same kind of ammunition that I have in my gun right now. Um, by hitting F3, I would reload the gun, but uh, I would waste ammunition there because it would give would go over a hundred percent. So I need to fire this gun a little more before reloading it. And there are different kinds of ammunition. Oh, there is someone. Let's shoot him. Please die. Okay, it's dead. No, there's more. God damn it. No, it's dead. Okay. So uh, let's lure that guy up here. Thank you. So we can shoot him. And there's another enemy somewhere. Okay, looks like we killed it. There's another one. Nothing. Nothing. Fuck you. So here's another door. Uh, since we don't have the green key card, we can't do anything here. So let's reload our gun, holster it, and pick up the jetpack. Careful. Um, if you're standing on on the ground and somebody shoots you, they actually shoot you out of the jetpack. 
The jetpack will remain standing on the ground where you have been hit and you will be sent flying. You may be sent flying off a platform and therefore never be able to get your jetpack back. Very careful. Okay, so um, there, as you can see there is a gun lying on the floor. But that floor, if we stand on it, it drains our health. So that is not a good thing. Uh, this actually is a machine gun or a submachine gun. I'm not getting it right now. Because I don't want to lose my health. And there are other submachine guns that we can get. Although it does have nice ammunition. So maybe I want it. Ah, dang it. Okay, we got this one. There's a canister. You can pick it up. It replenishes the fuel for your jetpack. And here we do have a key, the red key and some life. Okay. Um, this actually takes us to um, the mining area. Uh, we will not go there yet. Maybe at a later point. So I'm thinking, do I... I would love to shoot that guy. Got it. Okay. So we put put our gun down. Careful. And move away. Okay. So this gun uh, actually, oh no, it's not. I thought it had different ammunition, but apparently it does not have different ammunition. Okay, moving on. Oh, we can kill someone. Oh yes, uh, those little guys, uh, they will drain your life energy, so you better shoot them from away, from afar. Okay, come to me, my friend. You're dead too. Uh, can I shoot you from down here? Yes, I can. Oopsie. Might want to kill you too. Ah. You're dead? See that guy? You have to lure him to the ladder. And then we can kill him. There's someone there. And there was that. I hate you. Goodbye. Uh, 
and moving on i think there is someone here yes so we can pick up that canister and i think we need to jump in here okay we drop that gun here and see this says b2 that's a uh, more powerful ammunition Oh, I shouldn't have done that. God damn it. I wasted a bunch of ammunition. Oh well. Fuck my life. Okay. Uh, because um, this uh, gun uh, was quite full already and then I put the ammo in and... Um, well, over overcharged it, so to say. I lost ammunition. There's nothing we can do about that, so let's leave. So we have the red key card, which means we need to go to the red door. Here's the red door, we hit F4 and get in. This leads us to the shmup section. Let's pause the game for a second. The problem with this is, well first of all, it's a very nice idea. You combine a jump and run or a run and gun game with a shmup game. Very cool, I like both, both of those types of games. But control is very imprecise here. For instance, if you're going to the right, and uh, you accelerate while going to the right and the game sort of tracks that momentum and inertia so let's say you're going to the right and uh, but there is fire coming hostile fire enemy fire and you want to turn to the left to avoid that fire so you stop pressing the right button and start pressing the left button but what now happens is he starts to slow down moving into the right direction till he eventually comes to a full stop then turns to the left and starts accelerating to the left. Um, so this kind of immer inertia that the game um, takes into consideration. And you can see um, here that we are now uh, no longer in the central area, but you know in the transition area to that satellite area. Uh, so the game uh, takes uh, inertia into consideration to make it more, uh, in quotation marks, realistic but it sacrifices um, direct control um, and that is a very bad gameplay decision in my eyes so you can't really evade enemy fire um, because the controls are too indirect too delayed so all you can really do is to uh, is to move on and fire continuously and hope to kill as many enemies randomly um, as possible and decrease, uh, decrease the, um, the amount of damage that you take that way that's not very stupid. They should have made a direct control, and control uh, will be another issue in another part of the game. So, yeah, this kind of sucks. So you move around like that. You you shoot all the time. Those little dots that you pick up, those green, red, uh, yellow dots that you can see here, they actually increase your health. So you, or rather, replenish your life energy. You might want to pick up those. I didn't pick the last one up because I was already at full health. But um, yeah, it's a good thing to do. And those those fuel uh, barrels that you get, they also um, increase the fuel, like for your jetpack and for your speed bike and your mining craft vehicle thingy. So um, that's not where I want to go. I think we need to go down here. Yeah. So here's a laser that you need to destroy by shooting 
the emitters on the bottom and on the top. And that's pretty much it. You now enter the next level. Get in for fuck's sake. Thank you. Okay, here we are. Now you can see um, we are in that satellite area here. So you could holster the gun because when you're standing like that next to a floor, somehow the guns don't work. Don't ask me. So here's another machine gun. Ah, uh, yeah, come out. Uh, well, fuck you. We can kill those guys nicely from below the ladder. Goodbye. Ouch. That one drains your energy when it's next to you. And that's all there is. Fuck you. Okay, I got him. So let's drop that gun here and um, leave me be. I think you can destroy them easily with one shot. Or they do too much damage to you with the more powerful version of the ammunition. And um, take a look at that. There's a canister. Ah, very useful. Um, how did that work? Fucker. Okay, um... Shit! This is the big guy. Okay, we got him. So, um, there is something nice to be had here, see? And also another entrance. Um, no, you need a, a, a white key to open that door. So, you have to remember that the... the oh, fuck off! That the white door is in the northeastern section. Nothing? Okay, there's an enemy here though. And we have killed it. Fuck. I thought we could jump down, fall down. We couldn't. Uh, because I want to get to that, but I have no idea how to do that. How do I get to those platforms? I have no idea. Apparently not like that. Maybe if I jump like that. No, I die as well. Fuck my life. 
Okay, there's something else I want to show you. And you can put in your initials if you want. Um, come on. Yay, both of them. Shit, I forgot uh, the grenade. Anyway, those guys are the worst. No, other way around. Okay. So yeah, you never want to be um, next to the edge of a platform where somebody could shoot you off that platform. I'm just checking whether there's anybody I could shoot. There is somebody I could shoot. Okay, let's reload the gun and holster it. What? Ah, oh yes, I wanted to show you the mining. Hmm, let's do that. So we don't need to bother with all of that. Although mm, I might want to pick up that here. Thank you. See, it shoots you out of the thing. Doesn't matter. You don't need a key to enter the mining area because there's this this uh, triangular uh, thingy here and not a key uh, card reader so you just get in here like that and this is the mining area hmm so you're in that little thing and you can move forward and backwards uh, I mean up means for moves forward and down moves backwards but it's hard to say. I'm assuming um, because when I hit up, I move up, that this is actually the front end of the vehicle. I can shoot, so say, to the front and to the right. And if I use the left and right cursor keys, I turn the vehicle around. Uh, but this, this control method is very imprecise. And of course, there seems to be some kind of gravity. Um, that uh, draw draws you down. I'm sorry. Is this thing uh, actually uh, drawing me towards it? What? what? Now I'm, I'm seem to be drawing up. I have no idea why. And I'm, I will explode now. Whatever. So the controls of that part of the game are the worst. You, you just can't control your vehicle. It's it's annoying. I don't really know. So yeah, that's that's all I can show you really of this game. I've never beaten it. I've never seen anyone beaten it. Beat it. Um, if you take a closer look at YouTube, there is a guy uh, playing the DOS version a bit, but he's even worse than I am. 
Um, there's another guy playing the Atari version of it, the Atari ST version. He uses a cheat um, that makes him invincible. You can't take damage that way. Uh, but he he plays it for an hour. He still is not is not able to to finish the game. And I haven't watched the whole video, uh, but that makes sense because, for instance, you can be shot out of your jetpack and off a platform and not being able to get to that platform again and therefore maybe not able to reach a mission critical area that you would need the jetpack to have access to so yeah I can understand that making yourself invincible doesn't necessarily mean that you can win the game that way so what are the worst parts of this game well well this game has all the components and all the potential for a very great game. It has a run and gun section, it has a, has a shut, shoot em up, a shmup section. Uh, there's, there are lots of items you can pick up, different kinds of ammunition, there's a jetpack, there's a speeder bike, lots of components that could create a very good game. And then they fucked it up beyond recognition. Um, for instance, those teleporting guys, those guys that beam in and mess up your day they're the worst they either should be taken out or I mean I understand they want to force you to move, move quickly not to move too cautiously uh, and remain in one area uh, too long because if you remain in, er in one area for a longer time those guys will beam in and fuck you up uh, but they overdone it uh, maybe they should have increased the beaming time but it takes them a few seconds longer to actually materialize so that you can react to them and kill them before they uh, pose a threat to you. Uh, the way it works now is you really have no idea, no chance to actually do something against them. They will come in and they will take away a piece of your health and there's nothing you can do against that. You can kill them eventually but they will reduce your health and if they happen, if you have been happening to arrange your inventory you're really fucked. This is another part. You can only carry two items around and you need to have, uh, for instance, the ammunition on your belt before you can actually put it into your gun. So this means you might have to drop your gun to pick up something else to put it on your belt and then re-pick up the gun. And when during that time somebody beams in and shoots you and, you s and sends you flying, you can never get your gun back. That means you're fucked. This is not a good idea. They should have had a separate inventory screen where you can first of all hold several items and that pauses the game while you manipulate those items. That would have been a good decision. Um, what else? Yeah, the controls in the shmup section. I already explained how they are uh, a very bad gameplay design decision. Yeah, those are the main critics that I have of that game. So this could have been a very great game. Sadly it's not. It still fascinates me. I, I mean, I love the graphics. I love that. I love run and gun games, uh, jump and run games, and uh, in the combination with the shmup section, that's that's really cool. And yeah, could have been a great game. Sadly, it's not. Um, you can try your hands on that if you want. It's easy to find on the internet. I actually have the original version, uh, the a box um, from the UK. Uh, it, it comes on two uh, floppy disks, four and a quarter inch floppy disks. Yeah, I mean, if you can play this game, uh, if I don't really know whether there's anybody that is actually able to finish this game. If if you can do that, then by all means, please record a video and upload it. I really want to see how the game ends, what it has in store for the player. But I can't be bothered. I mean, I've been playing this game since the early 90s. And they've never gotten much further than I would have shown you. So, yeah. Okay. I guess that's what was that was that. Um, so, thanks for watching and see you soon.